So basically what we're going to try and do is um, the, the title of the workshop is spatial awareness, okay? So what we're really going to try and go after is something that I assume most of you guys sort of have a sense of already, and that is that especially for most of us who are involved with, say, the H9s, 10s, 11s, is that right? Yeah. Most of us are? Okay. We're still trying to get them to pull their hand back, follow through with a hand pass, point their toe, use the laces. So we're still working a lot on the technique, which is obviously super important. Sometimes what we do is we neglect then the more game awareness and game sense things. And what we're going to go after tonight is we won't focus a huge amount on the teaching points of the skills. We're going to try and and go after trying to create as naturally as possible opportunities for the kids to use their heads, okay? To use the space. But in order to use the space, you got to realize where the space is. You got to identify it. You might need to work with a partner or a teammate to create some. You might need to talk to each other. So communication is really, really important. And a few of those other, other more um, uh, peripheral awareness skills that we really need to create, um, if that makes sense. So what we want this to be is, is as interactive as we can. Paul's done up some brilliant resource that I'm going to send out after. We're going to we're going to actually just do the things ourselves today. And what we want to do is, at any point, we'll stop, change it. We want you guys to give us a sense of right. I'm with the noise. There's no way they can get this, and we'll try and bring it back, or we'll try and push it forward, depending on the ability groups that you have. And that might be different from the group that's coming to you now and the group that you just had. Does that make sense? Yeah. Paul, did we miss anything? No, I suppose ultimately what we're looking for is, it's long term. So where we want to be down the road is in a situation where players and teams, uh, forwardly, forwards, defenders, can create space collectively. And, and what I would always use, that, uh, I, I, my, my coach and points, I always use the term vision followed by movement and communication in any particular order. But vision has to be the, the focal point of it. A long, long way away. But what we're trying to do here tonight is uh, strip it back right there down to grassroots, not to coach the kids eh? Just to, uh, Noel used the word there that stuck with me there last week. It's the hard word them that when we do get to the stage that we've introduced that, that that kind of movement patterns, deliberate movement patterns is there from what we've done. And the second thing what I'm looking for is that if someone comes along and sees you doing something next week, uh, James, what are you doing that for? Why are you doing that? That you can tell them why you're doing it. You're not just doing it because you've seen it on a workshop, you know, because to me that's a pay when I see fellas doing stuff, coaching, and I know they've done it on the course, but they don't know why they've done it. So if we can give you a bit of an understanding where we are, You'll be able to dissect anything we put together out there today and do it that will suit the needs or the ability of your own team. We don't put an age on anything. We'll know we'll deal with what's in front of us at any given time. And so just to close this off then, Paul, for those of you that aren't aware, Paul has been working a huge amount in his own club. He's been in GPO for years. He has been involved with the different development squads um, as well. So a lot of things that we're talking about here, Paul has started going at county level and stripping it back to, okay, that requires... Um, an over-the-top ball with someone coming out of here and, and giving a shout to go there, okay? But as Paul said, that's level, let's call that level 10. Even if we're pitching at a level two or three today, effectively, what Paul is talking about there is that there's no schemes to say X to here, O to here. We're trying to create thinking players, okay? We can give them some patterns, but ultimately, we want them to be able to see the in-game scenario and take the best option. And often that, that requires them working together, if that makes sense. Um, so what we'll do is, we'll, Paul's going to set up, I think the lads are finished now, Paul's going to set up a couple, of, uh, a couple of little activities for us that we're going to go to. We're going to start with a couple of really simple um, warm-up games that, that are quite generic, but have this sort of stuff in mind, okay? And then again, build it up and build it up and build it up. Space and awareness, okay? This is a very, very small space, it's deliberately so, okay? So here's what I want you to do. Use every inch of the space you can, whatever you're comfortable with, do a bounce, a solo, a throw, a catch, whatever you like, but just at whatever speed you like, just try and use all the space and not lose, not lose track of the ball for one minute. Off we go. That's it, let's go. A hop or a solo, whatever you like. Good, 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 good. So I'll give you no more instructions for now. We're just going to go through this for a couple of seconds. Well done. Well done. A bounce in the solo. If it's too easy, use the other foot. Too easy, use the other hand. Well done, Ray. That's it. Nearly there. Hold on. What's happening? Circles. Circles. <coughs> Why does the circle thing always happen? Did you know you were going to run the circle? You knew you were going to run the circle. You knew you were going to run the circle. But most of us still ran the circle. Why is that? Yeah, and we are trying, just think about this, this first principles here. We are trying to get the kids out of the habit of, of, what, of 
what, what did Paul say? We're doing this for the sake of doing it effectively, okay? So while we think that we're, it's, we're freewheeling it here a little bit, we're actually not. You aren't making any decisions because without realizing it, I'm just jogging along behind the person beside me. I'm jogging along the path the, le path the le least resistance, okay? We need to get the kids out of that habit. This came from the 16th session there. And we said hardwired. When we're doing simple things like me passing the ball to Sean, okay, and then wanting it back. Even though we tell the kids to call for the ball, after the first one, they'll call the first and then the second one they'll forget. It, this needs to be so ingrained into them that it, it can't rely on us telling them and it can't rely on them remembering it. They can't think and then do it. So it has to be as, as underpinned as it possibly can. So let's put a tiny little trigger on it. Four steps, change the direction, okay? I, I want to, that's, that's your goal now. That should mix up the circles and then in a, in a little while, we shouldn't have to do the four steps and then change direction because. Let's go again, 30 seconds. Four steps, change direction, slow as you want. Go to the place where you see the space, okay? Use every bit of space you can. Now, this is fundamentally different. This is unbelievable. Well done, that's it. We're finding every free pocket, every free pocket, a little bit of contact, well held. Sean, take it down a notch there. Well done, well done, well done. Last couple, last couple, last couple. Well done. Well done, right, okay, excellent, really good. So, because it was fresh in your head, that was perfect. If we do that again next week, we'll probably go back to circus. So, as with everything, we're gonna to return to this as often as we can. So, I'm giving you something to think about now, okay? And, but it's easy, it's a bouncer, a solo, and we can focus on the four steps, change direction. The more things I throw into the mix, the quicker you'll forget about the four steps. So let's try this. Let's go do a, if you're doing a bounce, it has to be between your legs. If you're doing a throw, it has to be a clap beforehand. If you're doing a solo, you have to do something in the meantime. So it can either be a clap or a clap under your foot or a solo and turn, whatever you want. But there has to be something different in each skill. Don't worry about the speed. Worry about trying to do that one extra thing. Well done, Sean, that's it, that's it. Nice razor, Harlem Globe Trotters never had you. Well done. Keep going, keep going, keep going, well done. Now you're gonna keep moving. When I blow the whistle, you're gonna change balls with somebody, okay? You're still trying to do your tricks. When I blow the whistle, you're gonna change balls with someone. Ready? Off we go. Good, nice, nice, nice. Well done, well done. Off we go again. <laughs> Well done, well done. We got one more. Oh, lucky, oh, lucky, oh, lucky. And relax a sec. Bit manic. Would the eights be able to do that? No. I think it would be carnage, would it be good? And here's the thing, right? I love cones and I hate cones in equal measure, okay? What we're trying to get the kids into the habit of doing, and Paul's going to do a little bit now. We are going to set them up where we potentially have a crutch for them at the start. Right? So there's no crutches for you here, it's just a free square. When the kids are little, when, the, when they're our age, they might need a crutch. And that crutch might be, go from here to there. Or there's two places to go, pick one. But it's not go anywhere you like. This is go anywhere you like. What we need to decide is, what level are the eights at, or the 11s at, or the 12s at? And that might mean that your 10s are are behind your nines. That's okay. But what we're trying to do is, we're trying to challenge all the kids. So I'm, I'm telling you guys to do it uh, under the thing and a throw and a catch or whatever, because I know most of you guys can do that. But the kids mightn't, so we don't put them there. But what's super, super important is, is that we try and give them as many opportunities as we can to make decisions, because to make a decision, you've got to know what, what are these two options? I, need, I can't just be hardwired to go in a circle. I have to be able to say, there's two options here. At the very least, I need to have a think about which one is best, and I take that one. And then all of a sudden, there's three options, there's four options, there's five options, and then the other stuff that makes things more difficult for those of us that have done the foundation before, how, how do, what, are the, what are the ways to make things harder? What are the ways to progress something? Speed, time. Yeah, space, time, equipment, equipment and people. people pressure. For me, that's the most important one. The pressure that we put on them and the pressure the pressure can be there's a tackler in there or the pressure can be they're on the hook to deal with in a certain amount of time or whatever it might be so you said the word chaos 
This is my favorite game in the world. Some of you guys have probably seen it. We'll just finish with this, then we'll go to Paul, okay? Hopefully about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Perfect, okay? Let's have a quick game of tag ball. Everyone knows what tag ball is? Okay, tag ball is, let's say I'm with the colors. We're, it's a really, really small space. We're gonna have one ball. The aim of the game is, is that my team has to try and tag the Bibs team as many times as we can in 30 seconds. The rule is though, if I'm in possession of the ball, I can't move. All my other teammates can move. So now, you guys are effectively trying to use all the space you can and stay away from this ball. And the guys in possession of the ball, you're trying to put yourself into a position where you're close enough to receive the ball and tag someone. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah. So you're not allowed to throw it at someone. You've got to be close enough on the, rece on the rec reception to reach out and tag. If you get tagged, you're not out, you're still in. It's just a point for the team. You can only tag with the ball. Only, yeah, <laughs> you can. No, no, no strangleholds, really, right? Okay, we give it a go for 30 seconds. So let's say the non-bibs are in possession. This is the ball we're going to use. The bibs, all you've got to do is stay away from this round thing for 30 seconds. Ready? Steady? Off we go. That's it. Well done. Good hands, Sean. Good hands. Good hands. That's it. So you guys just got to use the whole square. Use the whole square. There's one. Well done. Unlucky. Well done, Kieran. Go again. Go again. Good, good, good. Can't move when you have it. Can't move when you have it. Everyone else got to move for you. Good, that's it. Ah, oh, well done, well done. That's two. Ten seconds to go. Last ten. Three, nice. No ganging up on anyone. That's it. Well done, last five. Four, three, two. Freeze. Well done. Get a breather. Okay. I didn't specify, right, but let's really try this. The kids will do exactly the same thing. They're going to just fling the ball around the place. We still want to get into good habits here, so we're still going to use the hand pass if we can. And the critical thing is, is our handling to try and exploit an opportunity, okay? Really good. Three is the score to be. If you can't be three in, um, in the 30 seconds, let's say the losing team does five jumping jacks because you said it. Ready? Set. Off we go. Use every inch of space we can. Every inch of space. Can't, you can't move when you have it! Can't move when you have it! Don't worry, Sean, we won't count that! Good, good, well done, Mike, that's all right! Good ball in, ball in, ball in, it's all right! No score yet! No score yet! What's happening? We're panicking, we're panicking! Put you out of your misery. Orange is me five jumping jacks. Let's go! One, two, three, four! Five, okay. Well done. Come on in. Right. Some of us have played that game before? No? no? no. So we're going to go off the pile in a sec. Before we do, what did you find tricky about that game? Back to dinner about 20 minutes ago. Okay, right, the dinner. I think we should have put that in the email, yeah? <laughs> what else? When you have the ball. Yeah. Because you want to go and get the yeah. nearest there was no like the, the, All of a sudden you get a ball so quick that you weren't, you weren't communicating. It was just a bit like, oh yeah, and you're like, I wasn't, I wasn't ready, so. You're trying to watch task. You're trying to move, but look where the person is. Yeah. Move, look, so move, look. So your, your brain's going, so what do we do? Do we move? Do I run after him? Not that. So that's the tricky bit. Right and you know what I actually found really interesting? But we, we all don't know each other, so it's hard for me to say, Kieran, go there, Sean, go there, Ray, go there. Right, so that's, the, when the kids know each other, That'll be the gold dust then of, do you know what, actually, you were actually trying to coordinate things, which is great. It was Mike was like, somebody get over here. And as, as you were saying that, someone threw the ball at you and it went over there. <laughs> right, and, he, and here's what, here, here's, the, here, and it, it, this is the levels. When we're talking about this particular topic, and Paul's going to take this over now. The levels are first at a really fundamental place, giving the kids uh, the, the, the patterns or just a little bit of a sense of move into the space, okay? That's it, just move into the free space. Then the next levels above it, or even if you just think about it, we have, we have really, really rudimentary things here. And then what we expect them to do is go out on Saturday and play Castle Knock and there's 14 people milling around the place. You guys are screaming, Ray shouting one thing, Paul shouting another type thing, but both, both good stuff but they're getting so many messages and so much information. Most of the time then, it ends up being something like that. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. Okay, and by the way, and some of them still can't do the basic skills. So when we throw them into the match environment, uh, this, the, the, that chaos, we can't protect them from that chaos. That's the point in what we're doing tonight. We're trying to arm them for that chaos as best we can. Even if that means that we strip it back, 
right to fundamentals and the the concepts that Paul's doing with the county teams, right? It's just an advancement of what we're going to do for the next half an hour. Does that make sense, Paul? You were thinking that, imagine what's going on in, in an under eight or an under nine's head, and that's a, probably a common mistake that coaches make, new coaches make, old coaches made before that try not to make a game, but it doesn't always work out that way. So I always have to take a step back, why it's not working, and go, yeah, maybe that's maybe that's the level we're not right, yeah. And so hopefully when we're going over here, play a simple game like that, and someone goes, well, we under 10s do that now, they're going to tell me, what are we doing this for? It's okay, we'll rank it up then, and we'll make it a bit more, we can, we can challenge them a bit more mentally, you know, and if we can do that, that's what we're looking to do. You know, but it's a, it's a starting point is all it is. It's a starting point. We won't try to rush through it. And the main point, when you walk away from here, is not to try to rush through it. Because that's when you will get frustrated and disillusioned at times, are we? Okay, we have a bit of 50-50 in the numbers, have yep. we? Yeah, pretty much so. Okay, right. We've a uh, uh, hula hoops in here. Everyone jump into a hula hoop. All I'm going to do, every time you hear the whistle, I want you to, to find space. I'll, I'll just on the call, right? I'll, I'll give it a clap, right? Find someone else's, move into someone else's hoop, or who comes free. Go! Go! <laughs> Go! The chairs. Good, good, okay, good. Prime example there, what happened? What happened with this guy here? Anyone tell me what happened? Do you want to tell us what happened? How he ended up in there? Where were you running? Yeah, yeah, right. Always important to remember when we're dealing with space and we're talking about making players better. When one door closes, we want to be able to have players to look and see where the next door will open. All right? And that's a great example of it. Obviously, you have a lot of experience when you have you're a grown man, but that's the concept we're looking for. When one door closes, another door will open on the pitch. Okay, go! <laughs> go! Okay, if I was to say to you now, we're, we're walking off about our nursery under eights here. Doable, enjoyable, yeah? How can we, how can we, uh, under nines, tens, how long do you think you get out of it? Ten minutes. Ten minutes? Ten minutes. No. Huh? No, two, two minutes. minutes. Well, I, I, every time anyone asks me a question like that, I say, how long is a piece of string? I don't know, or, but I know when I'm doing it. Right, so that's, don't put a time limit on it. You'll see when it's breaking down or it's working. So if we're doing that with an under nine, you say two minutes, right? So that's kind of our introduction. How do we think we can make this more, a bit more talk going into it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Team colour? Okay, right. Let's go with a team colour. What game do we all play as kids where you had to match four colours together? Connect four. Connect four, right. Let's play a game of connect four. Now, we can only have four men in the line. So we have more than four on the team. So we've got to be aware now, if they're going for the four in a row, where can we interject there to block out that four? When the four is blocked out, let's go again to another one, right? All right, off you go. 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 <laughs> Come on, keep going. We still haven't got it. Come on, keep going. We've got to move. Come on, move. We've got to make connect four. Come on, keep going. I don't see connect four. Come on, look. Come on. Okay, connect four. Connect four. <laughs> okay, what are we working on and playing Connect for? Communication, what else? Vision. Vision, what else did we say out there was the other part, component of it? Movement, Movement right, right. And if you talk about our team, what else did we get? We add in there? What, what did we work as? We worked as a team, right? So, and then we go back to what I said there about the, the last guy that went over there. Every time we've done it, a door closed, but we had to make another one open. So that's where we're looking to go. Let's try that one again, all right? We ended up with two, two fours here, yeah? Two one. Uh, they cheated. They oh, cheated. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, you ready to go again? Go! Four. Okay. So what do we, if we want to advance that on, say, now, and that's happening to me regular, how am I going to challenge my players? Right. Tell you what, do. Orange is over there. Non bibs over there. Have a chat and come up with a solution. How we're going to challenge that? How we're going to how we're going to stop that? Checkmate after one run. Because remember how a football pitch works. We have defenders and we have attackers. Let's think football on this one, yeah.
Let's go, right, let's get back in, find an out square there. Can we just play as we came, as the thing we came up with? I think it's more, it? it's, it's connect four, but you decide how you're going to get there, but All right, uh, we've already seen right. checkmates happening too quick. Let's work on it, we know how football is played. We're footballers and defenders. Let's see how we can play connect four using the same concept. Go! <laughs> Yeah! No, we still check right here. Come on, come on, come on, down. Oi. Yeah, we got it. Oh, we got it. Okay. Okay. Just to finish up on that one, right? We talk about how to lace things to a football pitch. We are working as a team. We need four. We need four. We need like on a football pitch. We say we need scorers and we need defenders. How could we have walked in a forward defender motion? A notion that we could uh, employ into this. Our forwards will attack, right? Because that's what they do. We we said we said four to be the four that make the four, and then we pick three of us just as blockers to push. So when they were to go for the four, we had to. Well, right. So right, we had a chat about it. from a defensive point of view. We had two. Yep. What I would do if I was doing this, I would say, right, we're four. You're going to try get connect four. I'm going to watch what they're going to do because I'm defending the zones and then I, if we can see them going there to make a neck for they block that out. So all of a sudden then I brought a football situation into a simple little game of moving from hoop to hoop. Right? We're, going to, we're going to just to, to clean this one up, jogging around the outside at a nice pace. Every time you hear the whistle you're going to find the space but it's not going to be one for everybody. Musical chairs are to in a sense. Come on. Down those hoops. <laughs> Who's out? Off he go! Keep him moving! Keep him moving! <laughs> last one! Let's go! Last one! <laughs> Go! Okay, guys, alright. Does a little fun way to bring competition into it because despite what they say, competition can be good. Along with not isolating any one individual, competition, creating a bit of competition is good. Okay, guys, ball on our cone. Normally, you in the nursery, I would introduce doing this bit of coordination, walking through, throwing balls, but we're not here to walk in coordination, but it is something that you can always add in when you're doing the ball. Because we're focusing on space, I want to see the last man standing, right? I want you to knock a See that? Don't do that. Don't cheat. Right? You're holding the cone, spot, yeah, knock the ball off, someone knocks your ball off, go out to the outside with your ball, yeah? Last man standing, last person standing is the winner. Yeah, out you go, <laughs> hard luck. Out you go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, good, good, yeah. Okay, okay. What are we walking on there, guys? What are we walking on? What's happening here when we're playing that game? Evasion, true vision. What else? Protection. Protection, right? Yeah, yeah. So it's like if you want to bring it back to a football pitch. As soon as I say go, I won't say, I can't remember who he was. Just unfortunate how that is, because I don't, I do like hanging people out. Straight out and go, fellow and straight in like that. We all play, oh, look after kids' things when we all follow the ball. Right? What we're trying to do now is make fellas a bit more aware. Right? Oh, so I have the Sean. ball in my hand. That was, Sean, Paul. that was you, Sean, was it? Yeah. <laughs> right. Sean, right. We don't, we don't want to be a Sean, right? We <laughs> right, have the ball now, so we're going to go with that again. And let's be a bit more, let's not be rash about it. Let's be protective of ourselves as well as being eager to get the man off the ball off the hand, right? John, great. Off we go! He's done that on purpose again. Good, good, excellent. Looking side to side, go behind me. Okay, bring it in again, bring it in, right? Game, game, I can see there was a bit more. Head swinging in that one on there. Fellas were being a bit more aware of their surroundings. What age would you would you would you pin that on? Or what ability? 
Yeah, any of them, yeah. Yeah, I've often done it with an adult team. You know, coming into the championship, your fellas are a bit wound up. So we just we'll take things down a bit. You can do. How can you? How can you make it a bit more competitive? Teams, maybe tag teams. Teams, yeah, teams. And if you want to relate back to our pitch, because everything we have to do on the train and uh, and training has to be tied into the pitch somewhere as well, that we can uh, only more than one, more than once. So if you're walking in teams, or whether it's in twos or threes and four. You're hunting in pairs, like you're tackling, so you can communicate, go left, left, hold, he's coming, he's coming, and you're going in and after. Loads of different ways you can do it. As I said, you can, with the kids, throw the ball to me, throw the ball to me. Right, right, right. There's loads of stuff you can do with this coordination, and it's just concentrating. You can have them running around the hall, in a big hall, early like this, throwing the ball up in the air and catching it, but they still have to be aware of what's going on around. There's loads of ways we can advance it and strip it back. Handy tool, Noel says if any team wants to just let him know and he'll order the Gansey load of O'Neill's. We see in this side the small square, the liberties designed to be small. We have our markers on the ground. If we're starting off at the basics, we're just going around getting our bounces in or our solos if we're well able to do that. We're still focusing on our skills. We're going to call a colour and you go around and get bounced the ball on all the colours, right? So let's go, let little solos around the area and on their call, I call a colour. He's got to get a bounce. We got to get a head up. It's nice and tight. Blue. Blue, head up, head up. Good, good. Orange. Okay, now we're going to solo on the ball. We're going to solo on the colour. Green. Make sure we're getting all the greens, guys. Red. Okay, let's hold up there. Let's hold up there. Can we see now how that can work from someone who's struggling with the basic skills that we can still keep it moving, yeah? Yeah, well, but now we're, we're getting moving on a bit, we're getting more competent in our skills. How can we make that now a bit more, with a bit of zip in it, and a bit more, a bit more intense, that way we're challenging our players? Huh? Call the colours more often. Call the colours more often, yeah, so it's constant that change, right? Anything else? Combination of colours. Combination of colours, yeah, I like that. Anything else? Time limit. Time limit, right, so for instance, yeah, as we say, if I call red and there's one six reds, you have five seconds to get the red, so you're going to be doing things with a bit more pressure. That's going to create a lot more chaos, all right? Uh, anything else? In terms of our skills, we're getting better at our skills. What, what, what kind of solos can we introduce into it? Both feet. Both feet. Dominant, non-dominant. Yeah? What else can we do? What else? Our dummy solos. Are we at that stage yet? Maybe 10, 11? Should we be encouraging the lads to do dummy solos? Oh, I'd probably think so. You know, so we're going in, we're exaggerating it, we're using our coaching cues, do me solo, do me solo, this is brilliant. Now we're going to make it uh, more chaotic, but we're going to have to still do it ahead of uh, a do me bounce, a spin off, anything at all. But you, as long as you're intensifying and challenging them, it stops that trotting around. We've all seen it, we've all been part of it. And as I always say, when I see a group like that, I don't blame the players in the middle, I blame the coaches. Because it's up to us to keep, the, to keep that level up and that energy up, right? So what we'll do is now, Oh, you're gone. We call uh, two colours. So, uh, first colour is a uh, bounce, second colour is a solo. All right, let's get it going again. Green, red. Yeah, you can bounce it, it doesn't matter. We will get to it, yeah. Keep going, keep going. Okay, now we're a solo, it's a dummy solo. Right, we're still on red for solo. Dummy solo now on the red. Okay, every time we solo now, I want to change the direction. I want to, when I'm going into solo, I want to exaggerate, but I want to change and go back that way. So now I've got to be a bit more aware when I come back up with the ball. Okay, off we go. Good, good. Brilliant, brilliant. That's great, lads. That's great. I'll sign a few years for my team. <laughs> great, good, excellent. Excellent. Okay, hold on there, hold on. How do we find that? 
Oh, it's, we can do it. We do it. You have to think. To be honest. It's switched on the whole time. And you know, when you start out with a, probably the younger team with a skill set might be where we wanted to be, because that's always what we like as coaches. You can make this area bigger. I just have to make sure that the traffic is not too chaotic. But as I do find, they will move on quicker. We'll bring them on, we'll advance them. And all I do is getting their head up. Where am I going next? Where am I going next? Where does that play, where does that play a part on the pitch? Getting his head up. Getting his head up. Uh, one of the most, one saying, I, I hear coaches saying all the time, and, I, and I, I don't agree with it. Play what you see. I don't agree with that saying. Because if a fella's just doing that with his head with the ball, all he's going to play is that ball. I want players to see everything. So I want them to get their head up and scope around. And then I'll play what's best, not what I see. You know, because I want to be able to use every player, every bit of space on the pitch. So we want to get our players playing with their head up. Total, total vision, total vision. And decision making then will come as the more and more we work on that and give them the tools. Because as we always say, when we're with the ball in our hands, we want to exploit space. When we don't have it, we want to make it as tight as possible. And if I'm asking a guy to deliver the ball, to a, a guy down there, 20, 30 metres away. That's a, that's, a, that's a bit of an asking that, because he's going to be under pressure. But I'm asking a guy to put a ball into a 30 by 30 square metre of space. I don't think that's as big an ask, you know? You have a bit of scope, a bit of tolerance for the pressure you're under out there, you know? The best in the country don't put, mind putting it into space, so we should we? We should be to tell our young lads not to do that, you know? And not sure you hear me saying when we move on up here, the space, not the face. Yeah, we're not looking for the man, we're looking for the space he's going into. Okay. Sorry, but Paul, but just one little thing. And um, the thing that jumped out for me there is that the concepts that we're talking about here, you can see someone said, Paul, you said, who would you do that with? I'm looking at Ray, who's the manager of my team. I'm like, if we did that tomorrow with the, with the twos, we'd be all over that, the Connect Four game, this yeah. game. So this is not about age, this is about, this is about their level. But th what, what are we talking about? We're talking about awareness, we're talking about decision making, we're talking about vision. But the other thing that jumped out at me there is we're doing that for maybe three minutes, start to finish, and I'd say he's probably got about 50 touches in. Okay, so we're, we're, we're doing the concepts, and then in the likes of this, and most of the other things, we can introduce the ball then and get them into those, into the, into, okay, we also need to bounce the 10 on our right, 10 on our left, solo it, and if there's some of the kids that are able to do that, quick dummy solo and change direction, and then there's other kids in the same group or whatever that might be struggling to do that bounce and a slower change, that's okay. Okay, sorry yeah. Paul. No, no, Grant. And uh, well, I know we're moving along quite quick here because I want to get through everything because I think, and that we've done so far, you'll walk away here with a Louis that you'll create yourself because there's loads of stuff we can add and, and add more and add into games to, to make them, to piece them together as a jigsaw. Therefore, when you go out on a train, not a lot of space we're actually using here, you know. And we'll, we'll have a ball in our hand for, for a, a, a lot of it. And with the time we won't have the ball in our hand, we're going to be thinking, okay? Um, we're going to move up here, right? I've just got to explain what we have up here. Uh, we have, it's basically broke into nine boxes. Three, 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 was it? Three. Anyone want to tell me what, what that could signal on a pitch the way it's designed? Say it again there. It's the zones of the pitch. I always kind of walk in three different zones. We get, um, whether it's for a kick out, I walk in the three zones. Because if a half forward is winning the ball and they kick out, he doesn't win it really in the half hour. He's coming into them other zones. Uh, for, if we're up top on it, you're talking from the midfield downwards. So all I want us to picture when we're in here is that we're on a pitch. Now, this is not for the kids that are going to train. This is for you to give you the understanding and to give you the tools then to go when you are coaching it. If you can see that pitch, that's, that's, a, that's an excellent start because you will coach them the right way. They don't have to see the pitch now at this moment in time. But when we're walking these squares, that's what we're going to do. I want just uh, give me uh, six, just six bibs in there and a the full forward line, say, and a half forward line, right? The rest guys, we can come up here and watch because we, we, you'll see a lot more from watching than sometimes than actually being in there, yeah? Can we make our squares there the way we are, guys, yeah? This is a square here. There's a square down there. You jump in there, corner forward. You call that corner, full forward. You jump there, wing forward for me, yeah? You don't need the balls, guys. You can just roll them out to the side. We're walking without the balls. And, now, yeah, no, don't need a ball roll out. Right, right. As I say, we're taught, we're thinking pitch. We're thinking pitch. So if we're walking our zones, I normally encourage my players to walk central of the zone so they can go left or right. If I'm walking, for example, say, out in that corner, and he, he done that on purpose to, so I could be able to show you out there. I don't have a lot of scope to walk in. 
in that zone because if there's a defender in there, if he's making a run, I'm able to shepherd him. So I want to in there, give yourself a bit of, a bit of room in your space to manoeuvre. Right? That's just a little a cue that you'll hear me saying, your space, make sure you're, you're in control of your space. Okay, go back to where we've done the hill roof there. We can use this, this tree here as well. On the whistle, I just want you moving into another zone. Can't be anyone from your same team in there. Right? So this we're thinking, we're just moving zone, someone's coming out of a zone, someone's coming into a zone. Go, go! Okay. No, no, on the whistle, on the whistle. Okay, okay. Go again. Okay, right. To you guys standing there. Is there anything they can do to make that a bit easier for themselves? Just we're thinking a bit more, but we're only I'm talking for coaching for you guys, so you guys can understand what it is they're doing coaching your guys. Communication. 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 Give me an example of how that could work there. Organise the switch. Organise the switch. Right. They're only on the means there, but organise the switch. What, what space do you tell me you want next? Now what space are you going to take? Okay, who are you going to tell you want? Who should you tell? Okay, well, so there we have, he's communicate. He, well, he's going to communicate to him for his space, right? And that will also give this guy here a heads up that he doesn't need to go in there, right? Okay, on the whistle again, let's see if we get him a communication in there. Okay, okay, let's go again, I want to hear a bit of communication. We can use these ones. Okay, right, okay. So now we're just moving and creating, uh, just moving from zone to zone. Just, uh, if we were to advance this to a, a level beyond, I never really encourage the run this way. Why, why would that be? Huh? I'm not facing the bar, but whose space am I running into? I'm going running into someone else's space, right? Again, I'm coaching, I'm not, this is not how we would coach our kids. We will slowly get them out of this habit. If we understand it, we have a better chance of doing it, right? So these two areas are they're all in play. Right. The way I'll give you an example of if we're, if we're thinking football pitch, this is what we want to be doing. The ball here in my hand. I'm a, I'm a ball, I'm a man here with a ball, right? If you come for me with the ball, just come to me. If his man doesn't come with him, what can I do? Give him the ball, right? But if it, give it back to me. If his man does come with him, what has he done? It's created space, right? So that's why I do I discourage that, running back somewhere else, because you're running back into somewhere. So if you were leaving to run there and stand beside him, there's a job done there. Because if your man doesn't go with you and he gives you the ball, you notice how 10 are going to get it from the line anyway, because we dictate terms with the ball, right? To get back to what we want to do now, I just want this move, but I want us doing it with a bit more intent, right? How can I make this now a bit more intense? Anybody? Yeah, we can do that, right? But I find when I'm doing it, because we are now we're talking about coaching with our kids, they will go through that little motion of doing that, right? You guys jump in as defenders, right? So now he has to lose you. He has to lose you to get into that zone, right? So now we're going to intensify it. Now I'm, now I'm talking to my, my teammate, my kids on the pitch, and I'm saying, you're a defender, you need to follow him, because now we're walking a pitch situation also, right? Bit more intent. If we, can, we can use these guys, we can use all, the, all these squares, yeah? Ah, good, brilliant. Good, good. That's it, that's it. <laughs> Tell me what you did there. Tell me what you did there to, to get at that space. Yeah, what kind of communication would we call that? Right? Non-verbal, right? Non-verbal. It's a non-verbal communication. Brilliant, because when you coach your lads and you're in Parnell Park and Crow Park and these guys, you're going to, hey, Johnny, get out of the way. You're not going to walk with the 80,000 people there. Well, non-verbal, right? Excellent, right? That's okay, we're in it, yeah, we're in it. Yeah, good, yeah, good, good, okay. Just get back into a, a, a nice pitch situation, right? Nice pitch situation again. Give us that full forward line, half forward line, right? Right? 
Here. Hold up, hold up. There we are, exactly. What have you created here? A channel of space. What did I tell you? Not, what, did I, what was the instruction I gave you? Not for room for five seconds. Right, so all I'm adding, all I'm adding into it now for you, from a coaching purposes, is not every run you make has to be straight away because if you look there, the gate's open. Now, ah, the gate's open. If that's a kick out situation, which is actually something I use a lot, that opens. Ball down, which makes the run down, right? So not every run has to be, because then what we have is, we're just running, because the whistle went, and I'm looking to find the square. Let's have a look and see what will open up. The put in a better place. All right? Go! Good, good, yeah, good. Okay, all I'll say now, I never like running that way. I don't mind saying it'll never be on, but it can't be your first part to call. Right, we always encourage, talk about when we come out in there as a nursery coach or an under eight and you have a bag of balls. What do the, what's the, the first thing think the kids do? They run the wires to get a ball, right? So naturally, we try to get them to come to, towards the play or in that direction because they're running that way, it's probably more of a soccer thing, ball goes over the top, right? There's nine, there's nine boxes, nine flags, nine stands in the centre of the square. Put it in the centre of your square there, yeah, that's it, yeah. Uh, there should be nine in the menu, so back into our pitch position. Oh, there as well, yeah. Shot one Think we've a spare one day, Dave, yeah. Think we've Okay guys, now, I'm, now I'm, I'm at a stage now where I'm 10 minutes at that and I'm shaking them up but I want, still want to get them thinking that it's about attacking that space and getting in there as hard as we can. So now we want to find a, a zone, that, a vacated zone and we're going to attack it. I want you to knock over the flag, that's your goal. So now our defenders, I want you tuned right in. We have flags, we have flags. Of, yeah. yeah, bring that one, you jump into that one there, jump into that one. Into the next one there, yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, you're, you're going to try to get there before he can. Now, as I always say, when we have the ball, we dictate terms. Football is a forwards game. But I want to create that bit. What we're, what we're trying to create here is that bit more intent from air forward. Instead of just getting into the zone. I want you to get in there. Get that down. Because if that ball's in there, we're going to go. We want them as going as hard as we can. So when we do introduce the ball, the concept they're going as hard as you can into that space. Don't just run, you go as hard as you can. Knock it off. <laughs> <laughs> forward is, yeah. Okay, stand them back up again. Stand them back up again. You can't knock over the flag in your own cone. We need a couple of cheaters on that one. Jesus Christ. Father Ted and Dougal, they're minding the flag. You've got to make a run. Oh, you've got to make a run. You can shake him. You can communicate him. Because you can't do your flag, but you can get his. You want to tell him to get out of there. You want to, tell, you want to go for that. If he wants to go for that, we're talking about space. If he's look, if he's lining up that flag, what's the best position to, to take him? Right, we're talking space here. I'm going to give you a heads up here because he he's not allowed to go over that. Come over here, come over here. You can. Right. He's not getting that one. Right. He was not getting that one. Right. I hate cheaters. I don't mind them. I just hate the ones that get caught. Right, go. <laughs> good, good. good. One there. gate closed, another one open. And all I'd say on me cheater over here is. The only, the only power you could get was the one there. The soccer ball over the top. Oh, as a defender, we oh, take that as a win if that's the run he's making. Okay. Bring a bit of gameplay into it. Right? We'll have a uh, oranges up here. We'll change it around after a couple of minutes. Up, man off the shoulder, give and go. And wherever the the, uh, the non bib, there's two zones there. See the zone over here? And there's a, a four cones over there. There's their space. Right, that's where the passes are aimed for. But the, the, it's going to be dictated. By the runner. Right, we go back to where we there. What was our communication method up there? Non-verbal, right? So you're coming out and you just 
ready to come out and point to the zone. Man gets off the shot, head up and sees where you're looking. Put the ball in there. We're going back to what I said earlier. The face. The space. Put the ball there. I back any forward to get there over any defender. But that's what we're going to do. Um, I'm a big fan of this kind of stuff because when you get the ball up there, just roll it back down towards this area. When you have mixed abilities in the team and you try to do, it, say, drills with a lot of moving parts in it, kick pass, next man this, next man that. If they're not at that level, if the group is not on the same level, it tends to keep breaking down. So we tend to do a lot more of this stuff where it's going into the space there. You're usually going to do kicking because that's what you're working on. They're going to do the bit of running into space. When we change over, that's what your focus is. But if we depend on B to make C to D, find with a lot of times when the level is not where at the age groups and they do that, it keeps breaking down. So this is one I, one of the I love doing it because I'm getting what I want there. I'm not going to keep stopping it to make he's at the breaking down, get it going again. It doesn't need to get it going. If you make a bag to the kick, doesn't matter. Keeps going. Next, who's up? Keep it going. Keep it going. Self regulate your kicking yourself at the age of that. We spot, we spot and fix with the kids when we need it. If it's through our coaching cues, whatever we do on it, we'll just keep it moving and I guarantee it'll work. But what, what's the key? What are we looking for? With the ball, the kick, space, space. I'll back any forward over, right? David, you got that? Move that camera. He's still going to get it because. But they still have to. Yeah. You yeah. Want still yeah. Still make the run. yeah. He's making the run. Yeah. Now it's, it's important that guys when. When you get your head up, you gotta look up to see where what where, where he's going, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so it's boom, off the shoulder, you can go that way. If you go if you're the left four, just decide what way to go around your uh, your coach. Obviously you want to the great thing is we want to walk both feet and all that, but that doesn't always walk straight away. So we walk we get it walking for us. Let's master one skill and then we do. But we can still make the alternative room because if he has to go inside the foot onto that area or across it over to there, it's that's okay. He's dictating the road. So give us there. Uh, I'm just down here. No, you're going to do be the feeder. They're going to hand pass to you, hand pass it back. Get all the balls down here, lads. We keep you. You guys up behind that cone. Use it the forwards. Okay, so we happy then? So it's just the first person then is going to give the ball to me, receive it back, and you can kick it into that square, that square, and the receiver just has to run into that space and collect it. Yeah, can we just. The key, the yeah, he, 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 they dictate the pass, not you. Yeah. Okay. And guys, there's loads of balls here, and the ball keeps hitting fences. Same with the kids. Let's not beat ourselves up, just keep it moving. Because that's when the kids stand around. Eh? Keep going again. We've got to be super precise here. Because it is tight, and generally you would be looking at a bigger area. Just yeah, that way we are, what's tight, yeah? Okay, okay, we ready? Point and go, is it? Yeah. yeah. Happy? Yeah, let's go. Okay, let's go. Okay, guys, next one up. Next one up, we ready? Go, let's go, let's go. Keep her sharp. Now go, now go. Keep her sharp, keep her sharp. That's it, good, excellent. Yeah, excellent. Good, good pass. Ready now that's it. Good oh, point, we got a point a bit earlier. That's it. Next person, good, well good. Done. we're flying. Excellent. Take it off Excellent. the shoulder. Good. Just delay it one little sec, delay it one little sec. Hold on. Okay, we gotta get our head up. Okay, well done, well done. So you guys, okay, you guys right. go okay. when the person you're kicking well, to next, goes on the right side. So you need Brilliant. to delay Excellent. the second, delay the second. Okay, little delay, little delay. Well done. Good, good, yeah. Brilliant. Excellent. So you guys come as close to the centre channel as you can, so you can go either, go either right or left, depending on where they go. If you go that way, it might be a trickier pass. Now make the run, make the run, that's it, that's Still it. Still okay? How long do we think we walked far than that? Minute and a half, right? How many kicks did you get? Three or four. Three or four. How many runs did you get? Three or four. If I'm doing that drill, I do over 10 minutes. Five and then I switch over. Imagine the amount of touches you can do. Was it breaking down? Was all the kicks perfect? Did, doesn't matter, because we're still learning. Because if it's not working for us, we're, we're, still, we're learning by that and we're doing it. We're keeping it moving. Our three components, remember what he said at the start? What were the three components? Vision, followed by movement and communication. What, what, what was our commu what, How do we communicate? non verbal So we hear our three. Uh, uh, we got our milk, we got the whole lot of them. But that, none of it works if there's no vision. Right, so the fourth, that's why vision is non negotiable, it's that size. And the other two, on top of the other, either or. Because you got to have that vision. Alright, how can we make that if we're getting to a good level? How can we make that harder? Say again. Put a defender on. And put a defender here, put him under pressure. We can easily intensify. How can we make it more and more pitch? 
in a bigger area, you can put two in there because now we're bringing working collective into it. You can put three in there. Right? Now, we're still miles away from that, but as I keep saying to you, it's not about you're not going to talk to your kids at that level. But if you have that understanding, you'll know how to get there. All right? I think now we're going to break there, get them to see if they want, they want to do now. Yeah, so what, what I mean, hopefully, like just the, where we started here, Paul did some excellent things, and as I said, they're, they're almost universal. But we can spend two minutes or 12 minutes here. What we want to get a sense of, from you guys is are, do you guys do anything like this do you, do you consider the things like this these sort of underlying concepts the vision the communication and the movement do we try and put those things in or do we find ourselves a lot of the time just working on the technical a lot of the time with, with what group what group okay so so, so, so they're so they're which boys 15. 15 okay so the eight boys and the tens girls and what you'll find is if it's the 15s girls or boys the proficiency levels will be here and here so if we wait for their technique to be perfect all the time before like if we go okay when it, when we nail the technique we'll start this stuff we'll actually never start this stuff not properly and as paul said even with this some of our kicks are going a little bit of skew that's fine this is a kicking drill sort of but it's more to try and get that sense of okay now i'm going to think about where i'm going and there's that there's that sort of um unity needed if you like between the passer and the receiver okay um from your point of view though do you, what are the challenges you guys face in terms of trying to get the kids like do you find their attention span is short do you find that things like this will be difficult because you don't think they've got the focus to do it i'm, I'm looking for you guys to we're doing the technical let's say we're doing it after training more so like you were saying but then on match days, on goal games, we are trying to bring in more the, the game element into it. So when, when they're playing, you kind of watch a game for a minute or two, you might say the girls up the forwards. They'll go, right, you're down there, forget it. Get up here, because you're not going to get the ball. You need to come a bit deeper. You're trying to get a, a few things like that. You say, why are you standing there? Mm. Try and move out. But we haven't, we haven't done them during the week, but you're trying to tell them during the game. Because yeah. we understand yeah. that. Why are you standing beside the defender? The ball is there, just move out yeah. of it. And you get, but they kind of look, and they will do it. Yeah. They don't know why they're doing it. And it's over our head. Uh, the only way you'll ever know, do they understand what you're saying, is by doing it in training. Because I never do stuff in training, and go and do, we do it in training. How do I know they know? Because they've told me, I, I, I do, you'll do it through questioning. Why are we doing that? Because on the kick out, if he comes out there, looking, how will I know she knows? I'm not going, you need to come out there, you need to come out there. That's it, that's that sorted. Let's go, Ali. Because that's, that's, that's what happens. And I've been there, done that, you know. Do you know the terrible habit I have of, does everyone understand that? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I understand. <laughs> Off you go. Yeah. And no semblance of understanding. So you do this all the time. Getting them to tell you what it is. Okay. We have, do you have an idea of what it is? Okay, Paul, tell me. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if, uh, if John goes here, well, what am I going to try and do? Yeah. Or, or, or what are my few things? What are my three things? If I asked you those three things that Paul just said two minutes ago, five minutes, yeah. some of us wouldn't get the three of them. Okay? But you'd remember when he tells you again. So Paul needs to, we need to, over and over and over and over and over again, hardwire those things in. So it's not even them having to recall it and remember it. Because if it takes them that long to do it, as you said, the play is actually gone. Yeah. The major, the major is the so they do listen, They're, they actually deal with a bit of focus and we have been putting stuff into the training scenarios to replicate pressure in match scenarios. And some stuff we've been doing in training scenarios, they are actually putting it. So for example, we start doing training scenarios whereby cook outs or kick outs, two to the wings, one in the centre, vocal, hands up, call names, call names. They're kind of doing that now without me having to say from the side. So they do listen. The major problem we have is time between the four stations and the matches. And then they're switching and they're talking to their mates in between the switches and stuff like that. The match station, there should be seven, seven to ten minutes long. In reality, with a time, oh, I want a drink, I want this. It's three minutes, right? The time you give them their positions, the fairness thing, they all congregate around the middle. They have three minutes of absolutely legend the ball out. But there's no listen defenders you need to stay goals because you don't have the time to impart for puck outs girls two to the wings one in the middle and then to the keeper pick a yellow jersey who's in space but they are they, i wouldn't mean to say focus the problem because i've noticed the amount of times i've had to say pick a bowling girl to mark that's the that's the reason the other time saying make space for the puck out that's the reason but, so it is it is happening but the time and with the, between the yeah. station and the match it's so compressed yeah. And you don't get a chance to really, really drill. Yeah. I, I, I think 
So, so. Think about the game at underage in the training session. That yeah. is, that, that's your best match day scenario. Don't, don't yeah. think about nothing on days failure. That's training. The only problem with that is though is when, when you play the likes of Vincent and Bolton, you know, they're not thinking like that. You know, they're coming out. You know, and we played some teams this year. They've been quite physical and stuff like that. And their girls gonna have to learn to deal with that. The, the major, I don't know. You, you, 2015 with me. The major issue we have is just time. Mm. Like, but, but unfortunately, it, 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 it's like the facilities. We we've got to we've got to cut our cloth a little bit. Yeah, no. And and I'm the biggest cover for this. Sometimes you just say going over their head. Sometimes we for the best will and the best intention in the world. Right, in we get. Right, uh, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to do that. And remember, flick the towel. Blah blah blah. And then six minutes is gone. And four minutes is gone. With you giving them five, ten brilliant messages. Whereas, if you can see, we're poly, like, to, right, okay, everyone find a column, everyone find a hula hoop, everyone just get one, and then off we go. And then stop, 10 seconds, change it this way, and then off you go. Um, and that is, like, the, that is the only way, and, and you're, you're right, Sean, I, I agree with you. Even though it's hard to do sometimes, that vision from us is really, really important. As in, as in this pattern here, we're not going to necessarily tell them why we're doing it, even if we put them in those situations in hula hoops. Yeah. We need them to get that as the years go by. What was the point you wanted to make yeah. here? Like, you know, the way we've got a team here, right? Which is space and vision and all that. Like, you know, it's a lot of time you go down to training and like, you go from one station to another and it's, you know, it's all athletic development, catching, solely and all that. So she said, so should you sit down like every maybe one or two months and this is the team for two months, right? And then talk to the lads about it and then do variations and variations and variations and then sort of build on what we're doing here now and make it more difficult let's get a bit more comfortable and then after one or two months switch to the next team or would you just do one week of this? What, what, what age are you coaching? Uh, under 10s, under 11s. Under 10s, under 11s. One thing I will say I would do, uh, the station based thing is uh, trying a lot of the way I do that but sometimes you just need to get away from it even for the week to sit yeah. them down and the one thing I don't like to do is think this is what we're going to tell them let them tell you I'll give you a small example of match on Saturday we all out on Saturday we got lashed on and we all got around right? the pitch was like a swamp I got to them right guys what's working? And they're telling me what's working, they're tackling, yeah, we're doing great tackling, yeah, yeah. What, what's not what's not working? Uh, we, we, we kick past them and we should be hand past now, right, right, yeah, grand. Uh, and about the conditions we've learned, oh yeah, not to bounce the ball, right. That was the team talk, right. Went back out, the girl that told me about bouncing the ball, got the ball out of the throat and bounced down, the ball took on the ground, you know. But I felt more confident in the going because they told me, you know, I'm not going to go, you need to go out there doing it because I'm, cause then I'm losing it. But I'm sitting down, the other girls have a better chance probably at times to listen to that. It appears that appears to, to me sometimes, you know what I mean? Yeah. But if you're getting the point across and then you'll start to learn that, like, well, she's always answering. Well, that's all, okay, yeah, let me know, say it. And I say, Mom, yeah, you know what you're doing there. Tell me, please, what happens there? What happens? But definitely, some, you might need to get away from stations for really, to work on a concept and go after. The other thing, if you remember the workshop we did, we did the four or five principles of play. Mm -hmm. Like, really simple, universal principles of play, like, for match day. We always do a quick kick. We always try and do a quick kick. Restart, quick, quick kick. Simple stuff that that they can they can see success from really, really quickly. Yeah. So they'll adopt it really, really quickly. It works, it, it, I mean, it, has, it works really quickly. They can all do it. They all get successful quickly. I don't remember what the other principles that we had in that sheet were. But they were, they were so simple. They were so universally applicable to any game. And, Eight. Yeah, so like from a defensive point of view, it might be something as you said, really simple. Like, like we, we want to get, we want to start using a touch tight, like the common language Mick was Mick was talking about that we can all start using. You know, touch tight is just not okay, girls. Everybody find it. It's touch tight. That's just a trigger to this. Or yo, touch. Oh yeah, sh and I got I got to go over to Michael really, really quick. Or it could be it could be scan or head up. Uh, so, so you're talking about vision there. So if we can try and and just hardwire that thing that as soon as I get the ball from Kieran. All the kids have different tendencies. Some kids, the tendency is, I just told you 10 seconds ago not to bounce the ball. But because my tendency is to get it and bounce it every time, then even though I know not to do it, it's hardwired into my head. Whereas if we can start using simple triggers like scan, and it'll come quicker for others. The scan for me is, we need to tell them what it is. But, but then when we start using it all the time, we only ever use a four letter word, scan. And that scan is head up. And as Paul said, it's not, it's not head up to look into the corner, which is often what we do, kick the ball into the foot forward. It's trying to be head up with that, with that camera right there. See the way that camera's got, got the eyes pointed? That's the camera. And then as they get older, as they get older, hopefully 
the 40 things going on in my radar, I can process that a little bit quicker and then pick the option. And there's going to be a million mistakes along the way. But the success for me will be, I actually got the head up and I took the four steps and I went to kick it that way and I went over the sideline. So here's, here's my big thing as a coach. Are we looking at the outcome and going, don't kick the ball the next time because it went over the sideline? Or are we going, brilliant. You, you looked up, that was absolutely the right option. Maybe a little coaching point for your kill in terms of the instep or whatever, whatever it is, do it the next time. And, do, and, and in training then, maybe our theme is technique or whatever. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to put the kids into a position where we're identifying, we're increasing that awareness as much as possible. And then as they get older, their tools in the toolbox will be, I haven't really got the kick pass in my right foot yet, but I'm gonna keep building it. As I get older, I've got the tools to go on my left foot there. But I'm seeing it, which is the most important thing. I don't just, my definition of a win is not what the scoreboard says. If we've taken stuff, we've been working on training to the pitch, that's a win for me. Mm -hmm. But I do firmly believe when we do take that stuff to the pitch, the scoreboard will reflect that. Mm -hmm. You know, and you keep saying that to them and it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a sprint, you know, it's a long term thing. And don't rush, and don't get frustrated because they, they, they don't do it. It's just, it takes time, it takes time. Real. And you might have a fella that'll never get it, but he's still probably an important part of your team because he's your, he's your big strong powerhouse that will do all the, the hard work from others, you know, so it takes all sorts to make it work. But don't get frustrated at the end of the day because when it comes together, it'll just, ah, jeez, look at this, you know, it takes time, it really does take time. Mm. I think one of the challenges we have now is, like a lot of stuff we're doing here is chaotic, because that's the game. And we have a big mix of coaches and volunteers coming in. And when it's messy, they get frustrated. So linear drills are much easier to run and it works well. So it's getting people comfortable in coaching that sort of yeah. chaos where it breaks down, and it might break down for 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. if those did, that, did that drill break down? No, no, no. Okay, so, uh, uh, if you're trying to do a drill like that and it, the way there's moving parts, I know it's going to break down. I'm not going to put that myself in the heart day. I do my, because I'm going, I'm a space, everything's space. I have a big square in the middle here of two, a line going across, a line across there. I have kids kicking balls. What are they doing? They're looking for the square, just dropping it off their shoe. There's balls moving, they're feeding each other. They're probably getting a gansy load of kicks in it. And I'm not getting frustrated because I, I don't need moving parts, you know. It's something I got away from a long, long time ago because at most levels, you'd be surprised at what level you could walk at and a lot of moving parts still might work, you know? Especially in hurling, especially in hurling, where, as you said, if, if the group activity is reliant on me being able to strike an accurate ball or kick an accurate ball 20 yards, you said the time, Mason, you, if, if you were to actually have a camera and do an exercise like that, you'd see that 60% of the time the ball is dead because of that. Whereas you said, 100 balls there, 50 of them hit the fence yeah. or whatever, but you're still, you're still going over and over and over again. Now there's some times where you need to do activities, like if you're playing a match or a possession game or whatever, there's gonna be things where most people are in, but most activities we get should be able to be, like the cone game, the, the, the connect four game, that game there. Even if three people didn't have a clue what they were doing, I, and I did, I, that did not affect me. If, if, if you know what I mean. You're not holding anyone back. I'm not holding anyone back. The fellas are still move at the not rate that they should up. be. Yeah. And fellas will get there, but not the same rate. But we're still able to do it collectively. And, so, and I don't know if there's anything else, but, but just to, to re re return to two things, because they're, I'm so delighted they came up. One is that comfort in the chaos, Ray. And, and from you guys that are here, and hopefully the people that watch this video after, what we're really trying to encourage is, is that, is that we are looking for the kids to learn through mistakes. We do not need them to be experts in this to play Bowden next week. That's not what we need. What we need is that faith, that longer term vision to continue to reinforce those things and then gradually you'll start seeing it. Gradually you'll get the light bulb coming in. Gradually, Jesus Christ, Maria always, always had her head down and just she'll do it once where you do it and then she'll go back and do it wrong five times and then, then she'll do it twice in the thing. And then the second thing that I'm glad Polly said was, and it's something that we really try and encourage, um, no matter what the, what the team is, is that questioning part. That trying to get the kids understanding by not telling them the answers all the time, right? Because one is they won't remember it, and two is they're much more, it's much more impactful coming from me or coming from you, standing beside me then, the exact same message coming from the coach. So the messenger is important. It'll, it'll go in deeper if they have to just think about what, 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 what about the conditions, do you know? Actually, yeah, don't bounce it, as opposed to you just saying don't yeah. bounce it. 
Um, so that questioning as opposed to always, always telling. Sometimes we need to, we need to steer them a little bit, but it'll be a lot more impactful if they, if they can sort of steer the ship themselves as much as possible. Um, anything else before we go? Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. It was shorter than we usually go, but I think that's what we're going to try and do from now on. Um, massive, massive thanks to Paul. I, I, for me, that was I got a huge amount out of that, and it was, it was just good crack. Thanks a lot to the multiple camera crews we have here as well. Um, a special thanks to you guys. I know you are busy enough. There's a million things going on, so the easy thing was not to come down tonight. I hope you have got a little bit out of it, and I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll be able to use this and it'll make your life a little bit easier as you go. Um, we'll just we'll all grab a ball or two, get the stuff in, and then we're home in ten minutes. All right, okay. cheers, lads. Thanks very much. Thanks, guys. Cheers.